Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to return to the world of digital electronics I've not uh, done anything on digital for a while so I think it's high time that I did and um, if you watch my videos regularly you may recall the last video I did uh, was on uh, latches uh, I'll put a link up there to the uh, that particular video might be worth having a look at that before you, you view this one there's a little bit of um, uh, information that might be helpful but I am going to revise um, uh, what latches are and I also uh, in that video I used some NAND gates to to create a latch so what I might also suggest is there's a video I'm going to put a link there um, that I did on logic gates so it's maybe worth having a quick look at that one as well uh, it might uh, fill in a few blanks for you if not you might just get away with watching this one but uh, I think the revision is always good so what we're going to do is have a look at a latch we're going to have a look at what we can do with it because actually there is um, quite a few things we can do with it so let's start not with theory although there will be some theory a little bit later on let's hop straight onto the bench and do a little bit of practical latch revision so here is uh, a latch made up from four NAND gates it's the 74 ls which is four NAND gates so I've got the latch made up and it's similar to a version you saw on the um, previous video so we've got um, the data and the clock here and the output of the latch um, we've got Q and we've got bar Q so bar Q is always the opposite of Q and as you can see at the moment effectively the logic state of Q is uh, low so bar Q is high uh, and when the latch is in the reverse condition uh, you'll see that LED illuminated and that one go out so to do that we need to clock the latch but you see if I just clock it like that um, no change and that's because data line is still low so the latch is just taking data as zero so if I take data high and then press the clock at the clock pulse the data line takes in the uh, data and the latch is now set to one and it remembers that number so you may recall I talked about that being a one bit memory so if data is high and I clock it, it stays high but if data is low and I clock it you'll see the latch um, drops back to logic state zero so that's the 74 ls um, now this bit of circuit here which looks a bit different is the 74 ls 74 which is actually two latches so the first thing to note about this circuit and we will look at the schematic in a moment is that I'm not using anything on this side of the, the uh, chip at the moment other than its positive supply here because there's another complete latch here which, which I'm not using uh, this latch is a little more complex it's got a couple more inputs but um, I'm able to get away with not even tying those low or high that's not best practice but it works so exactly the same principle if data is high and I clock it then the latch remains high but if I if data is low i.e. not pressed and I clock it it hops back to to bar Q so the data line essentially uh, is at zero and so the latch when it's clocked um, sets the memory state to to logic zero so exactly the same operation data high clock it goes high data high clock it goes high exactly the same the advantage of course of the 74LS74 is that we've got uh, two latches on here and which we're going to see in use um, uh, later on in the video whereas on here we're using all, all four NAND gates to actually achieve that so let's now go and have a look at the circuits that you've seen in action here okay let's look at what was going on on the breadboard just now so the first circuit which we have seen before uh, was the uh, latch which is made up from four NAND gates um, wired thus and I use the 74LS00 which is a quad NAND gate I've omitted the switches the pull down resistors on the on the push button switches and the LEDs and their associated current limiting, limiting resistors I think that's relatively straightforward uh, here's what we were looking at on the breadboard and uh, you can see the two um, pull down resistors and the center bottom there and the black line above the Q on the right hand side is actually a resistor pack that I'm using 
uh, to current limit the two um, resistors, the red, sorry, LEDs, the, the red and the blue LEDs. So that's that, that's the layout of the um, latch uh, when created from NAND gates. Um, now the latch chip, which is the 74 LS74, which is a dual latch, um, is usually given the square symbol that you can see there at the top and uh, it's connected to the uh, pins of the IC as you can see below. There are a couple more lines which I've not included as it's possible to do more things with that latch than than I'm uh, using it for today. So I encourage you to look at the, the data sheet if you want to explore more. But there is a second latch um, which is on the sort of the top side there and the C, D, the D, the Q and the bar Q connections are as I've indicated there. So on the breadboard then um, again very simple uh, very similar arrangement with the two uh, pull down resistors for the the push button switches on, on the left hand side and otherwise it's um, essentially the same. Notice there's apart from the power supply going into pin 14 there's no connections at all on the on the upper side of the IC there which is where the, the second gate is as we're simply not using them. Uh, good practice would be to um, tie them high or low but uh, it was working okay without that today so I thought I wouldn't uh, overcomplicate the view too much. So that's a latch. What else can we do with a latch? Well one of the things we can do with a latch is we can use it as a frequency divider. So how might we do that? Well we're going to take a latch and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect the bar Q output to the D input. So we're going to apply our frequency uh, to the clock input and if you want to sit with them um, a truth table and work it out for yourself um, I'd encourage you to do that um, life's too short for that for me essentially what happens there is the um, latch flip-flops uh, once for every two incoming clock pulses so what you get on the output is the frequency in divided by two now we've got two uh, latches available on that chip so if we then connect a second latch with an identical configuration except we've taken the Q output of latch 1 into the clock input of latch 2 and then uh, what we should hopefully get on uh, the output of the second latch is the input frequency divided by 4. So let's look at that on the breadboard and very simple circuit really just, uh, just lots of connecting wires. Uh, so what's going on there? Um, we've got a green wire providing the power supply to a pin uh, 14 and a green wire providing the, the ground connection to pin 7 um, on the top and bottom and then the rest of it is all to do with um, passing the signals about so the uh, clock input for latch 1 on pin 3 there I've marked as C and uh, then the Q output uh, which is the blue wire is then taken round and it goes into um, clock 2 via the yellow and the black wire at the top Q bar Q2 is connected to D2 um, using the green wire as you can see there and Q2 comes out uh, on the green wire on the top half of the circuit board um, and what so what we've got we've got the signal coming in on the left hand side there th on the blue jumper wire onto the yellow lead that goes into C and we'd expect that to be the frequency F or whatever we uh, select that to be uh, if we then look at the output of the Q, which is the first latch, we should get the frequency divided by 2. You can hopefully see there there's two divisions between the pulses rather than one. And then finally the green wire that comes off Q2 should give us the frequency divided by 4. That's, um, that's uh, how it works anyway. So that's the theory. Let's, um, let's now go and have a look at that on the breadboard. OK, here's the uh, 74LS74 set up on the breadboard as uh, I've described just now and I've got um, various connections going, uh, going uh, to the oscilloscope and obviously one coming from the signal generator as well. So this um, yellow wire here is the yellow trace on the scope and this is the, uh, in this case it's actually 10 kilohertz, so that's a 10 kilohertz 
um, square wave being fed into pin 3 of the first latch and the blue trace which is this one here is the output of that first latch and you can see straight away I'll put up a, a screen grab so it's easier to see we've got a frequency division there we can see it's clearly half and if you look at the data table which is easier to see on the screen grab uh, it's at 5 kilohertz and then the green cable here is the green trace and that green trace is the output of the second latch the latches are connected together with this uh, little loop loop wire that goes around here so we've got in output of first latch going to input of second latch and then the green wire here is looking at the output of the second latch so we've got frequency division by four and you can see from the table we've got uh, two and a half kilohertz right now the really astute amongst you that were really paying attention might have noticed there's another wire here i did mention earlier if you wanted to sit with the, the truth table and work work out um, exactly what's going on in this division process then uh, uh, you're welcome to do that why not if you're keen so what i've done i've attached uh, the purple trace i don't have a purple jumper wire so we're the closest we're going to get is orange i've attached the purple trace to that that connection on the first latch between bar Q and D so I'll just turn that trace on and clear up the screen again so that makes no difference to your blue and your green but what you can see there the purple trace is what's going on in that first latch where we've got bar Q connected to D so if you wanted to step forward a clock pulse at a time you would be able to work out uh, what's going on and here's a here's a screen grab of that so you can see it a little bit better so that's the 74LS74 working as a frequency divider and hopefully that's made some sense. Now there's something else going on here which is um, just something to think about. It's uh, beyond this video but I will do a video on this. And that is that what we've got here is we've got two pulses and every two pulses we're getting one pulse here and every four pulses we're getting one pulse here yeah that's the frequency division that's right but another way to look at that is that this green trace here counts one for every four ones on the input so that's a counter in fact that counts one for every two so we've got some kind of counting function going on here as well if we wanted to use it like that and indeed uh, latches can be used as counters um, that's going to be the subject of another video but the process is very similar okay well on the first video that I did about latches I put a link um, uh, in the video earlier to that uh, I looked at using latches as effectively as a one bit memory so this time we've seen them in use as a frequency divider and I've also hinted at the fact that another way to think about that that division process is that uh, the chip is or the latches are producing uh, logic pulses that effectively occur every so many cycles of the input um, pulses in other words counting so that's going to be the subject of a future um, video on digital electronics because I think uh, um, counting is definitely a fascinating topic and uh, it's certainly uh, quite interesting and it's a good building block so I hope you've enjoyed that video um, as always I would encourage you to uh, get a few of these components get yourself a breadboard if you haven't already got one and and get playing with this stuff you do not need um, lots and lots of um, equipment to do this kind of uh, checking I'm using very uh, modest frequencies here and you could certainly be doing this kind of thing very cheaply indeed and, and learn some practical electronics okay thanks very much for watching hope you've enjoyed it please consider subscribing if you haven't already it doesn't cost anything and it helps me uh, please have a look in the description I'm going to put some links to the previous videos and also going to put some some links to some information about latches and also uh, there are one or two uh, products there which if you if you have a look and it's something you want if you use the code uh, you'll get some discount and it helps this channel a little bit and anything that comes from that will go straight back into the channel thanks very much for watching see you on the next video